What's the most versatile presentation tactic to catch walleye? For many people, it might be the live bait rig. After all, live bait rigs come in many different forms and work in various situations, deep, shallow, and everywhere in between. For others, it might be crankbaits. Cast them shallow over rocks, around deep weeds, cranks work in mid-depths, and trolling deep open water to boot. Many of the best walleye anglers of our times have built their reputations based around crankbaits. The plain old ball head jig is another serious contender for simplicity and versatility for many seasoned walleye anglers. They work tip with plastics no matter what the depth. You can cast them, drag them, snap them, slow troll them. Tougher bite you say? Simply add a live minnow, leech, or night crawler to the mix. The truth is, very few walleye anglers go out on the water without some form of jig tied on a rod. Now let's join Jeremy Smith and Ty Shadeen in Sunset Country at the Lac Sewell Wilderness Resort on Lac Sewell, a famous Canadian walleye factory, and they are jigging up walleye. And the fishing is great. Fishing is outstanding. Back in Ontario, buddy. Woo! I'm gonna get this one back. Oh, on the fall. That was awesome. That's a nice one. There we go. That's a nice slack sewer. That is a nice one. Felt great. Yeah, we might want to get the net for this one, Tony. Huh? For the net. Oh, you have no idea how good this feels. Well, you do if you've been to Sunset Country before. You know how good it feels to be catching fish after fish. So get a load of this. It has been a very, oh, it's ooh, a big one. That's a better one we thought, yep. bud. Sweet. Oh, yes. We'll net that for oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. Come here. I'll net it for you if you get over here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. There's a good one. It has been a very, <laughs> very long time since I've got to do my favorite thing in the world, and that is fish in Canada. COVID kind of messed things up, and it's our first day back. We just got done waiting in line at the border, and we're on beautiful Lac Sewell out of Lac Sewell Wilderness Resort. And the mission this week is to see how many walleyes we can catch on jigs. So the show is gonna be about how to catch walleyes in Canada on jigs and minnows, jigs and plastics, and how to find them. I think this is gonna be a hoot tie. We have deserved making a trip like this. Awesome, You definitely awesome. deserve it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna get this one back. perfect years. Oh, it's just a better than average. It's just a lax sewell average. And it's just bang, 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 catching these things one after the other. And nobody has touched these fish for a year. What a special deal. We sat in line so long to do this and it was worth every minute of the wait. This place is so special. If you've been fished Sunset Country, you're just missing out if you haven't been here because this is just spectacular. Look around, the scenery is absolutely stunning. There are fish everywhere. We've got pretty amazing technology in the boat that we'll share with you, but you don't need that. The thing about coming here is you are just a good fisherman by being here. So it's just, uh, it's just absolutely fabulous. We can see the lodge from where we're at. We only had a couple hours to sneak out and it's just bang, 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 bang. But tomorrow we'll get into the details of what it really takes to find walleyes on a big body of water like this and how you can crack lots of them on a jig in a plastic or a jig in a minnow. We're staying on amazing and massive Lac Sewell. It's the second largest water body in Ontario and is truly vast. For as large as it is, there are very few locations to access the lake. This is part of what keeps this one of the most premier fisheries in the world. On this trip, we're staying at Lac Sewell Wilderness Resort on the west side of Lac Sewell, just south of Ear Falls. This is the perfect camp for fishermen. They have modern housekeeping cabins, a boat launch on site, great docks, bait, quality boat rentals, and everything else you need. Owner Scott and Heidi Ellerly are outstanding hosts. These two work hard to keep the camp tip top and make sure you've got everything you need to be comfortable. They're always working on improvements to make the camp better for their guests. In addition, Scott is a hardcore angler. He's on the water all the time and can show you exactly where the fish are, what they're biting on, and how to navigate there safely. But to be honest, there are fish everywhere and it won't take much effort to catch a pile of walleyes here. 
One of the coolest things about fishing in Ontario, especially Lac Sewell, is there are so many good looking spots. And believe it or not, almost all of these good looking spots have fish on them, but not all of them are loaded with the size of fish that you're looking for. So I'm gonna share with you the technology we use to find fish. Now keep in mind, you do not need all of this technology. This is what I do for a living. Yeah, so this boat has mapping, it's got down imaging, it's got 2D sonar, it's got side imaging, it's got 360 imaging, and it has live imaging. So it really has the entire technology suite that's available on the market today. So I'm gonna start with you why we use each piece of this technology and share with you why you don't need it all, but if you're really into fishing and you wanna upgrade, here are some of the places where you might think about investing. Okay, now let's start with the mapping. To me, if you're fishing Canadian Shield water, you must have an electronic map, not only for safety, for navigation, just it makes it so much easier for finding fish, likely fish holding spots. So in here, I have the, the Ontario map, it's the V2 of Ontario. Laxul is not charted in HD, but it gives you a really good idea of where a lot of the key structures are. And what I've got with this deal is uh, it's set up for the shallow water highlight to be in 10 feet or less. So anything that's 10 feet or less is in red. So that gives me a good idea of where I don't want to go. And right now we're targeting walleye in roughly 18 to 23 feet. So I have my depth highlight set up for 18 to 23 feet. Now everything on the lake that's in that depth zone turns bright green. It doesn't mean you can just go rip across the lake without regard for what could be down there. You still have to be safe, but that really narrows down where we should start the hunt. From there, we've got 2D sonar. So if you're looking at a package, the mapping and the 2D sonar are the most important things. We use the 2D sonar to look at what's exactly below us. So it's a nice cone that goes down and so we can see if there's fish in the rocks, you get those nice little hooks. And it's a really good idea to show you what's down there. And everybody's familiar with this technology. We have down imaging because oftentimes when you're in these rock fields, you'll see like a weird shadow or something you're not quite sure what it is. On the 2D sonar, the down imaging essentially truths that for us. So we can see if there's separation from the bottom. We can tell if it's a densely packed school of bait fish or if it's actually indeed a really big fish. Now side imaging, a lot of people think this is a great tool for finding fish, which it is in the right situation. You can see fish on side imaging, but most, mostly we use this to see where the edges are. We're looking for those big flat rocks that turn into sand, or we're looking for round rock points and those types of things. It gives us a really crystal clear picture of what the bottom composition is below us. There we go. On. It is nice to be able to sit and drill fish after fish after fish. And if you look at these conditions, they're not exactly ideal. That is one of the beauties of fishing a lot of this Canadian water is you can still find places to fish regardless of a 30 mile an hour wind. But think about what we used to have to do without the trolling motor technology we have. I mean, we can land on a spot, you push a button and we can sit here and just catch fish after fish after fish. That's definitely one of the, the most impressive things that's come along in trolling motors today is having that spot lock feature to be able to just enjoy the bite. Look, at Ty's got to run to the back. Think of back in the day, you'd have to have it on continuous into the wind. You'd be going here, you'd be going there, or it'd just be a mess. But this makes life a lot more fun. Well, there's a nice pot of them right there. Ooh, that's a big one. Oh, that looked like a horse. Watch that thing just up. punched it. Grab a snap real quick. Now you might ask, why on earth, if you've watched Angling Edge much, I'm sure you've seen Al talk plenty about, he, he never uses live bait. And we really wouldn't need live bait for a lot of situations. Last night we were out here, these fish were fire, man. I mean, they were just There's absolutely nice fire. Here. That's a great fish. And today we're having a harder time marking them and they're just picking stuff up off the bottom. It's one of those things where I've, I've been on Lac Sewell before on a houseboat trip where it was, Ooh, oh geez. <laughs> where you're going through fish, you get some on a jig and wrap, you get some on a plastic, but you put a minnow down and it is absolutely fish after fish oh, after yeah. fish after fish. Netter? Ah, no, I can get it, but there we go. Again, jig fishing for walleyes. You think you like, they like them? I mean, it's just an easy, 
simple way to catch a lot of walleyes in the day. You don't really have to work very far, hard for them either because they will come up for it. These fish are not really all on the bottom. They're all over the water column, it seems like. So we're just lift and let it drop. And actually on the electronics, you can watch these fish come up and grab your jig. So it's just a really easy way to catch a lot of walleyes because they really like to eat them. No doubt the jig is the most versatile and often the most effective tool in your tackle box. When it comes to fishing walleyes, especially walleyes in Canada, the jig is tough to beat all year long. On this trip, we've experimented with a number of presentations, but jigging is hands down the best thing going. The jig we're using is the new VMC hardball jig. Think of it as the perfect jig for a Canadian trip. It's a quality jig at an affordable price. We all know you can't get too attached to a jig up here with all the rocks and toothy critters. The hardball is a traditional round ball jig with some upgrades. It features a premium high carbon steel hook with black nickel finish, molded keeper, painted eyes, and all of the hook ties are clean right out of the package. You can also buy them in a 25 pack, ideal for your Canadian trip. We're fishing with minnows on the jigs, both live and artificial. What's on the back of the jig depends on the mood of the fish. With the weather we're experiencing, the walleyes have been moody. When we land on a pot of fish that are aggressive, the soft plastic profile has been awesome. No need to rebait after every fish, just drop, catch, repeat. And a little tip I'll give you with these things is I always super glue these plastics on. If I did not have this super glued, I've gone through about a half a dozen plastics already, but that little bit of super glue, you can see there's hardly anything holding on under the shank. I don't know, I've got a dozen or more fish on this. It makes it uh, a lot more efficient. We're using the Big Bite 4-inch Sensation Slim Minnow. This bait is the perfect size and profile and also has a smell that's very fishy. The walleyes love this thing and even when they're being finicky, it will still scratch out a few. Front's moving in, stuff's cooling oh. down. Oh, we got a double. There's so many fish here that if we're fishing for more than a few minutes without a bite on the plastic, we'll throw a live minnow on and it's one after the other. For the most part, we've been fishing a 3 8 ounce jig for the plastic so we can work it more aggressively and a quarter ounce for the live bait to offer more of a finesse presentation. A little too big for, a little too big for swinging. Boy, they're heavy. For the line, we're using a braid for the main line with the floral leader. We have some of the reels spooled with suffix 832 and others with suffix 131 in 10 pound test. The 832 has been a go-to braid for years and the high-vis yellow is awesome for jig fishing to see the bites. Recently, Suffix released the 131, which is their most premium braid. All I can say is, wow. I've not fished a braid that was this smooth, quiet, and handled so well. I can't wait for them to come out with this in high vis. It's easily the nicest braid I've ever fished with. Now for the leader. We're using Suffix Advanced Fluorocarbon Leader Material in 12 pound. This stuff is tough and extremely abrasion resistant. You might think 12 sounds heavy for this, but we're going through so many fish, it's nice to have a heavier line so we don't have to retie as often and can lift 20 inches into the boat like they're bass. That was awesome. This is a little nicer one here too, yeah. You know what, we get to use some of the most incredible equipment to catch these walleyes and all kinds of multi-species, but St. Croix came out with a snap jigging rod and it's their the Legend Tournament Walleye Rod, and it's a 6'8", medium, extra fast. And what's so great about that is on the link, you really want to have that leverage when you're snap jigging or jigging in general. And then when you're talking about power, all the way up to the rod, and then the action at the end, you want that quick response, that extra fast response when you're, when you're snap jigging. It's just the perfect rod for this situation snap jigging and really any jigging situation when it comes to walleye fishing. All right, oh shoot, I had my bail open. Oh, a little bit nicer. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Not bad when you can see him, that was like ice fishing. Just watched him on the screen. Boom, walleye, walleye, walleye. So Ty was talking about the rod 
you know, that we're using. And we both got Daiwa reels. And I just want to say one thing about reel size. These guys give me a hard time ice fishing because I like to fish bigger sized reels. And we've both got size 2,500 reels. And the reason I like fishing these as opposed to a 1,000 or a 2,000 is speed and line management. The bigger the spool, the faster you can pick up line. So if we see a school of fish and you've got a 1,000, it takes you way longer to reel up. It's also a lot easier to cast and manage your line with a bigger, bigger spool. And one thing I'll say about Daiwa's reels, I say it every time I talk about them, is the drags are absolutely fantastic. Whether you're buying a Revros for $50 or you've got, uh, I'm not gonna tell you too much about this one. You have to look at it for yourself. This is the Kage LTMQ. It is an absolutely amazing reel, but they've all just got some of the most amazing drag systems. And if you're jig fishing for walleye, try fishing a little bit bigger reel. These things are light, they're better for managing line, and you can fish a lot faster. Fishing in the rain, baby! Ah. There's one of them. Oh yeah, nice one, Jim. Big one. Big one, Ty. Nice, nice, nice. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm sitting out there. <laughs> oh man, is this a hoot. I'm telling you what. If you just want action, quality fish, Laxul has to be certainly one of the world's most premier locations to have a bite like this. I mean, it has just been nonstop ever since we got here. And it's not only numbers, but also really, really quality, quality fish. Like that one, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Ty. Woohoo! Look at this. That I mean, it's just been fish. all day, all day. This just non-stop oh, catching fish. fish. This is certainly a nice one, and this Woo. lake is absolutely full of them. Hey, you want to have a great time? Feel like the world's greatest fisherman? You have to come check out Sunset Country, and where we're staying right now, Lac Sewell Wilderness Resort, is a fabulous spot. <laughs> I mean, the hosts are great. Accommodations are perfect. If you just want to go fishing all day, it's absolutely fantastic. And the fishing is great. Fishing is outstanding. Great to be back in Ontario, buddy. Woo! I'm gonna get this one back. You know, if you're a follower of everything we do at Linder Media Productions, you know that my brother Ron had went home to be with the Lord November 30th in 2020. And uh, his legacy is unbelievable. Ron is 10 years, or was 10 years, my senior. He was my best friend, my business partner, my big brother. He watched over me all my life. We had a phenomenal relationship. Such a blessing, such a blessing to be friends, family, our, our life, life together. I, I'm thankful, thankful, thankful for it. As the year went on, we had received so many emails and messages and things that have touched people's lives that my brother Ron did that I never even knew about. They were on and on and on, and I accumulated them. I gave, gave them to my sister-in-law, Dolores. Uh, uh, in his latter years, he was so moved to help people just help him in so many different ways. And he had a real heart for drug and alcohol. And, uh, uh, but other things in ministry, he was so smart. He knew something about every single religion in the world. He studied them all the time. Oftentimes he would have three books at one time. You go on a road trip when he's reading three different books. Anybody on any discussion on any kind of religion and the foundation of it, the tenet of it, he knew it, he knew it all. Just this was a week ago. I'm going to read you this. I was so blessed by it. They still keep coming. When I looked at the envelope, it was addressed to me, and it came from Beirut, Lebanon. Naturally, I had to open it. <laughs> Who do I know in Beirut, Lebanon? It goes on to say, Al Linder. Middle Eastern greetings from Lebanon. First of all, please accept my belated condolences about your brother Ron's passing away. May the Lord continue to comfort you and the entire family while rejoicing that he is now in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus in heaven. I was amazed at Ron's knowledge of all things, but even that of Lebanon and its people. We had discussions together when he was attending Heritage Church and I was home itinerating. 
He was an inspiration and a blessing to others at many different levels. Your media coverage have helped me retain my sanity in a turbulent area of the world. I grew up in rural Minnesota on a river and a lake, but God's call has taken me to many places around the globe over 37 years in a, as a missionary. There are times I need to be renewed and watching your programs grant me a reprieve from the daily realities here. But, but I mean, I was so blessed when I read this and just, a, you know, I could just see my brother sitting there getting the Bibles out from all, all different Bibles and beliefs, beliefs, spreading them all out on the table. Well, look at this is what they believe. This is what this is what the, the Bible of Jesus Christ, the Bible. This is what this says. Compare these. Does, does this make sense to you or doesn't it? I mean, that's the way he operated. And uh, I just needed to share that with you. Uh, my dearest friend, my brother, my compadre, my business partner, you are missed, my brother. You are missed, but you are also blessed and you led, left a legacy that touched many people's lives all over the world. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. See you on the water.